Good evening, Hamlin County. Please take a moment to review the following information and contact Ms. Carleen Webb if you have any questions or concerns. We will respond to those questions in a future broadcast. Number one, it would be extremely difficult for most individuals to be unaware of the statistics, precautions, and safety procedures necessary to stop the spread of the virus. However, the national debate has become very complicated and somewhat politicized. The constant reporting, rhetoric, and fear may have helped to confuse what we need to do to remain safe. Although we may not always be able to follow every single safety precaution, it is clear that a few simple actions will help to reduce the spread of the virus. Although we will need to keep in mind a number of other issues, it is important to focus on the following four issues to help reduce the spread of the virus. First, we can wear a mask when it is possible. This is not always possible in all situations, but we should wear a mask when we can. Wearing a mask is not to protect ourselves, it is to protect others. Wearing a mask is not a sign of weakness, but a visible sign that you care about those around you and that you want them to remain healthy. Second, we can social distance as much as possible. There will be times at school and at work where we may not have as much distance as we would want. However, we can keep separation at other times and we should do everything within our power to maintain distance when possible. This will keep everyone much safer. Third, we can clean our hands and prevent infected hands from touching our eyes, mouth, nose, or face. Much of the evidence seems to indicate that the majority of infection will be transmitted through the eyes, mouth, or nose. Social distancing will prevent much of these infected droplets from entering your body but our hands could be our greatest enemy. Don't touch your face with your hands unless you have thoroughly washed them or disinfected them. This one simple process will keep you safe. Fourth, we can socially isolate ourselves when we are sick. We need to remain isolated for at least 10 days if we test positive, and we need to protect those around us by not interacting with the general community when we are contagious we would dramatically reduce the spread of the virus by wearing a mask, maintaining social distance, keeping our hands clean, and socially isolating when we test positive. Let us keep focused on these four simple procedures and we can be successful in our efforts to slow the virus. Number two, the task force in conjunction with the Morristown Area Chamber of Commerce are implementing an incentive program to recognize those businesses and industries who are taking the necessary precautions to keep their staff and customers safe. Many retail stores and businesses across the nation are implementing a mandatory mask policy for admission into the store. Big chain stores such as Walmart has led the charge to implement a mandatory mask policy to ensure safety. The task force and the Chamber of Commerce will recognize those businesses who have taken the necessary steps to implement mandatory mask guidelines. Each business will receive a safe workplace certificate and will be recognized at the end of each task force broadcast for taking the necessary steps to stop the spread of the virus by issuing a mask mandatory order. Local businesses may contact Ms. Carlene Webb and notify us that you have implemented this policy. A member of the task force or chamber of commerce will contact you soon for additional information. You don't have to be a member of the chamber of commerce for this recognition. We just simply want everyone to help us fight against the virus. Number three, the Morristown Hamblin Hospital is currently treating several COVID-19 patients but those patients are isolated in specific parts of the hospital. The hospital staff and administration have the necessary training, equipment, and resources to effectively deal with the current COVID-19 patients and have an action plan to treat additional patients if necessary. It is important to understand the hospital is still open and safe for other patients. Of course, the hospital is taking extra precautions to keep everyone safe but the hospital is still taking non-COVID-19 patients. 
Number four, it is clear the number of COVID-19 cases are continuing to rise at a sharp rate in the county. These numbers are important and we should do everything in our power to reduce these numbers. However, a more important number to review should be the number of clinically significant cases or the number of cases which have led to a serious deterioration of a patient's health or which has resulted in death. Although we need to take a number of preventative measures to prevent these clinically significant cases from occurring, we can take a single action to prevent much of this from happening. This is something that we seriously need to consider in our current time. It should be clear that the virus can have a devastating impact on any demographic group, but for the vast majority of the time, the virus will have a different impact on individuals depending on certain conditions. It is highly likely you will face serious health issues and the possibility of a fatal outcome is going to be much greater for you if you have any of the following conditions. First, if you're over the age of 65. Second, you have some type of current compromised health condition such as heart disease, obesity, kidney disease, COPD, diabetes, or in some other type of immune compromised state. Many who have become infected may not know that they even have the virus or that they may only experience extremely mild symptoms. These individuals will not overwhelm our medical facilities or exhaust the resources of our first responders because they simply will not be that sick. However, those with the above mentioned health conditions will become clinically significant cases and will consume a significant amount of medical resources and are likely to experience poor recovery results. These individuals are the ones that we must focus on at this time. We must ensure that those who are over 65 or older and those with the described medical conditions are protected. We must create a situation within the homes where these individuals are safe. We are asking each family to consider their own home situation and evaluate the potential for health risk to the elderly and those with medical conditions. In some cases, these individuals will be perfectly safe within the home because there is limited interaction with the outside community by other members of the household. However, others could be in extreme danger because multiple members of that household is working outside the home and will have multiple opportunities to bring the virus into the home. Please contact the health department immediately if someone in your home is over the age of 65 or they have a compromised health condition. We will help you evaluate the situation and provide you with the necessary guidance to help you protect those that you love. Many in our community may think that they're doing the right thing by keeping the elderly and medically compromised individuals at home, but this may not be the case. Please reach out to the health department, medical providers, or someone you trust and allow us to help you by conducting assessment of the potential risk faced by members of your family who are in higher risk of serious medical complications if they are infected. It is the right thing to do to conserve valuable medical resources and to truly protect those that we love. Number five, the last day for our summer extended school program or daycare will be July the 22nd. We will resume on the first day of school beginning on July the 31st. Parents wanting to participate in the program on July 31st will need to complete a new registration form which can be located on the school district's website. We certainly do appreciate your attention to this broadcast and we wish you the very best. Take care and remain healthy.